Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's TOC podcast. I'm Joe Weikert, chair of O'Reilly's Tools of Change Conference. Today's podcast is brought to you by Publishers Weekly, our TOC event partner. TOC now has a regular column in Publishers Weekly called Perspectives, and you can read the perspective articles on both PublishersWeekly.com and in their print edition. I'm joined today by James Levy, President and CEO of HipType. HipType is described as a platform for data-driven publishing. James, welcome to this TOC podcast. Hey, Joe. It's great to be here. So, as I mentioned, James, you refer to HipType as this platform for data-driven book publishing. Can you tell us specifically what you mean by that? Sure. Um, So, regardless of what kind of uh, publishing you're using, if you're using a self-publishing service or if you're going with a more traditional publisher, when you distribute your book through uh, the major retail channels, there's very little right now in the way of insights. So you can get information like sales and downloads. So you can see users' ratings and reviews. Uh, but that's about the extent of it. And so we come from the App Store world where there were major retail channels, and the insights that were uh, being made available through these retail channels was also pretty similar. It was just things like sales and downloads. And, and what we saw in the App Store world was these fantastic tools like Flurry and Mixpanel uh, emerged and helped fill those holes and provide these insights that help provide uh, uh, the mobile app publishers with uh, what they needed to make better products and to be more successful. And because we love books, we think that in book publishing, uh, authors and publishers, uh, regardless of what channel they're using to distribute their books, they should have access to these insights. So that's what we think of as data-driven book publishing. Okay, terrific. And, and I'm right there with you. I one of the things we've been talking about within TOC lately is how big data is going to become really important, and a lot of publishers feel like they're struggling with just uh, addressing the little data needs right now. So can you tell us a bit about the data you've collected so far and what kind of interesting knowledge has been uncovered from it? Uh, yeah, so at HipType, we're very interested in this idea of uh, the DNA of a successful book. Uh, you know, Personally, I've been very fascinated by things like Fifty Shades of Grey, and why do these books take off, other books don't take off? And, and we think uh, that, uh, you know, th- there are some things like luck that play into it, but there are also these underlying patterns. So the research that we've been doing is uh, largely geared towards figuring out what are these underlying patterns? What is it that uh, uh, books have in common in regards to who's reading their books and how they interact with those books that can help uh, identify books that are working or books that aren't working so well. Um, so some of the things we've seen so far uh, are um, that if uh, readers are ten times more likely to highlight a passage or uh, share or promote a passage or quote with friends if it's either in the first ten pages of the book or the last ten pages of the book. Oh, really? Okay. Um, uh, of readers will not return to a book by page 50. Of readers who make it past page 50, 85% will uh, make it past the next uh, 50 pages. So you have this conversion funnel where there's a lot of drop-off right away. And then once people get past the first 50 pages, um, a a lot more of them stick around for the long run. So that really means that, especially with looking at things like the free sample of a book, uh, you really want to make sure that you hook readers early or else they're going to leave uh, before they even get to the good part of the book. Yeah, you know, what scares me, I guess, about that is I've downloaded a lot of free samples, and none of them have been 50 pages long, right? And even though they've passed muster with me, the ones that I've then bought the book for, um, some of the ones, when I got further into it, I decided I really didn't like it after all. So it almost seems like the right solution here for readers would be all samples should be at least 50 pages long, but then I guess publishers wouldn't like that because they probably wouldn't sell as many copies, right? Uh, yeah, so, so that's a good point, and, and one of the things we're also looking at are these things like chunking books. Uh, you know, what is the ideal size for a sample? What is the ideal size for a book? Um, and I think the jury's still out. We, we've seen, you know, we've seen books with short, short samples doing well. We've seen books with long samples not doing as well. Mm. Um, so that's something we're continuing to look into. Right. Um, in regards to uh, free samples, we've also seen that, uh, just as you mentioned, it's very common for readers to have a lot of free samples and not to necessarily even look at those samples. So yeah. uh, 4, 4% of readers, uh, from, from the data we have, finish. Uh, for every ebook sample you have, there's a 4% chance that you're actually going to finish it. 
Um, so, so the the chance that you're actually going to read through this book and purchase it is pretty low. Um, and and we think that there's ways that publishers can improve this conversion rate even to as high as like 10 percent. So I want to make sure I understand that right. Are you saying that your data shows that? Of all the samples that go out, only about four percent of them are read completely. Uh, yeah, that's that's right. Wow, that's stunning. And is it safe to assume then that that's maybe the percentage of conversion then to people that are buying, or do you think some people are stopping partway through the sample and then buying still? The the conversion rate is actually even lower than that. Oh wow! Because not everyone who finishes the sample ends up buying the book. True. Okay. Okay. Got it. So let's talk a little bit about how hip type works. Are the usage patterns that you're tracking, are they through your own reader app or are you integrated somehow with apps from other vendors? Yeah, th that's a great question. Some people have said that we're a little bit like Google Analytics for eBooks. Okay. Uh, and I think that's a pretty decent analogy because uh, Google Analytics doesn't require you to install a special uh, web browser when you're viewing a website that has Google Analytics installed. And likewise, we don't require your audience to use a special reader app. Um, so like Google Analytics, our service works by putting a small amount of code directly into the markup of an EPUB-based book. And uh, depending on the platform, the implementation and features are slightly different. Uh, but on each of these platforms, we have a variation of demographic information that we can capture when the book is read, um, as well as uh, book performance data that helps authors and publishers understand how the book is being used, how readers are uh, interacting with the book and what parts of the book are working and what parts of the book aren't working so well. So, so tell me something. Let's let's shift gears to the creepy factor, if you will. The data sure. that you're talking about here is wonderful for publishers, but how how do you think readers will respond when they discover that this stuff's being gathered and that you know Big Brother is tracking their every move? Are, are they are they able to opt in or opt out, for example? Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, uh, ever since we started working on HipType, we've been very concerned about the potential privacy issues. Um, first, because as you know, as a business, that's uh, something that we need to take very seriously. And also, as readers, we take our own privacy very seriously. Um, so, um, and and uh, you know, McCarthyism wasn't too long ago. Uh, in a time where people are worried about things like the Patriot Act and worried about um, law enforcement wiretaps and things along those lines. There's a lot of uh, very reasonable expectations that uh, people really should be concerned about something like analytics within ebooks. Um, so that's why the data we capture is completely anonymous. Uh, it's totally aggregated, so publishers don't see how individual readers are interacting with their books. They get a high level understanding of how their audience as a whole is interacting with their books. Um, and and we, we have a disclaimer uh, inside of books that explains what we're doing. And, at any time, readers can opt out. Okay, that's good to know. It does kind of reduce that creepiness factor, as I was saying. As a reminder, uh, today's podcast is brought to you by TOC's event partner, Publishers Weekly, and I'm speaking with James Levy, president and CEO of HipType. Now, James, let's look forward a bit here. Uh, what are some of the trends that you see happening with eBooks over the next, say, six to twelve months? So, the, the biggest trend that we're anticipating here at HipType is the emergence of new revenue streams for authors and publishers. Uh, so, for example, something like a uh, subscription option for readers, it may seem like a very small change, but as we've already seen uh, working with things like gaming and apps uh, and even enterprise software, the transition to a service model actually has very profound uh, implications and represents a, a compelling growth story. Uh, so it makes it all the more important for authors and publishers to be collecting and analyzing data so they can better understand not only how to convert readers from a free sample to a purchase, but how to uh, convert readers to a subscription that ultimately represents a much more powerful relationship. Uh, we also think that an ad additional revenue stream that we expect to see emerging pretty soon is uh, more promoted content within books. and. Uh, uh, and that's also an area where data is very important because doing promoted content right requires relevance, and relevance requires data. So promoted content, is that basically advertising, paid placement basically, or what? Uh, yeah, it's, it's essentially advertising, yeah. although we think that it's, it's not necessarily going to take the same form that it takes on, say, websites where you have things like banner ads. Uh, 
we think that there are some you know interesting opportunities to do things like uh, cross promoting books and for publishers to recommend their uh, backlist titles and things like that. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so we think that there's going to be a lot of experimentation in this area. Some things will work. Some things won't work as well, but we're excited about it. Yeah, so I want to follow up on a point you made about subscriptions. I tend to agree with you. Um, I, I, I feel like, though, they're going to be verticals, so by topic areas. For example, I would subscribe to maybe a, a sports subscription uh, package for eBooks, or even more precise than that, baseball, let's say. Um, do you feel like that's the model of the future, or is it? can publishers really create their own subscriptions by their, their entire list? I mean, that seems kind of hard to believe to me. Yeah, I think um, I, I don't think that readers tend to think in terms of publishers. Right. So it would be pretty rare for a reader to say, "I want to subscribe to every book that this publisher comes out with." Yeah. Uh, what we're probably looking at is, as you mentioned, are things like the genre or category of a book, things like the author of a book, um, and maybe even some things that aren't so obvious. But a lot of this is going to come down to uh, the the retail channels and what and what they provide and uh, you know, uh, direct channels, alternative channels, and what types of subscription options they provide. So on the retail side, we're really looking forward to seeing uh, s seeing some new features that enable this type of uh, business model for publishers. Okay. Well, let's talk for a minute about uh, a statement that I took off of your website where it says, uh, publishers can learn from the demographics of their current audience and, and how they can most effectively target their marketing campaigns. So can you tell us a little bit about how you see that working? Sure. Um, so one of the interesting things that we're seeing from our data is that there are some pretty intriguing traits that the audience of a given book might share. Uh, this, this might be things like the age or location of readers, uh, it, but it also might be things like the type of music that the audience of a book tends to listen to or what mobile apps they use or things along those lines. And because our goal with HipType is to achieve the revenue mandate uh, of a book publisher, uh, we've, we're taking the data that we're collecting via our analytics plugin and other sources, and we now have data from over uh, 88,000 titles. So we're amassing uh, millions of data points, and we're using this to uh, uh, automatically manage and optimize Facebook ad campaigns hmm. so that we can target uh, the specific types of, of people who are most likely not only to purchase the book, but to read through the book and share it with their own friends. Right, okay, all right. Hey, I, I know your startup went through the, the Y Combinator program, so what was that experience like, and, and what advice do you have to uh, all the others out there that would love to go through that as well? Uh, yeah, so just to give a, a bit of background, Y Combinator is a three-month incubator program. Uh, we're in the summer 2012 batch, and uh, I, I don't think I can disclose yet the number of startups, but it's, it's safe to say that it's the largest yet. So every, uh, every batch, the, 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 the size of the number of companies continues to grow, so the, the program is scaling out. And, and this is actually gets to the real value of the program. Uh, you get a little bit of seed money, you get access to some incredible mentors who really help uh, give you some, you know, the type of advice that a startup at an early stage could really use. But it's turning out that the, the single most important benefit that you get as a Y Combinator company is access to this incredible alumni network mm -hmm. where you have literally hundreds and hundreds of founders. And it's reached the point where uh, no matter what kind of startup you're doing, there are other alumni who have done startups in similar space. Um, so already with HipType, uh, uh, some of our early customers and investors have come from this alumni network. So it's already pr providing dividends for us. Uh, to other entrepreneurs who are interested in uh, applying to Y Combinator, I would recommend, if you haven't already, I would read through Paul Graham's essays. Right. Um, because even after you get into Y Combinator, those are still incredibly relevant. And there's a lot of wisdom contained in those. Uh, I would make sure to start reading the Hacker News website on a regular basis. And there's a lot of uh, interesting discussions that happen there every day. Um, and I would also remember the Y Combinator mantra, which is make something people want. And uh, w when there's a hundred other things that uh, that you're dealing with, sometimes it's hard, it's easy to get away from that. And you always have to keep it in mind that you're you're building a startup because you need a, you're making something that doesn't exist in the world, and there are people out there who want it to exist. Right, right. It makes a total 
Uh, total sense. Hey, la last thing I want to ask you, James, and this really has to do with what could potentially be done, I would say, with the data that you're collecting and, and feeding publishers is I I'm intrigued by the thought of creating multiple versions of a book based on what features each customer likes best. So the one I get may be different from the one you get, for example, even though it's the same core title. So how, how would that work? And are you concerned with customers complaining that they got one version and their friend got a different one? Sure. So uh, testing out multiple versions of a book is something that we're already doing at HipType. We think that there's uh, a lot of uh, uh, big potential for authors and publishers to, to run experiments or release a beta version of the, the book and see how, it's, uh, see how it performs and try making changes. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the biggest constraint we're dealing with at this point is that the, re the, the retail channels and the reader apps themselves don't have great support for this kind of thing. Right. So I would love to see something personally where you download a book and maybe you can uh, upgrade the version of the book or choose between the different versions. Um, and some of this has to do with, uh, uh, it, it gets complicated, there's a lot of moving parts I understand, but I think this would be a great thing for readers. Um, I know in the past I've downloaded a book and then I know that there's an upgrade out there and sometimes there's, there's no easy way to get it without... Uh, doing something kind of convoluted like removing the book from your library and then downloading it again or something like that. Yeah. Um, so this is another area where I would love to see some forward movement and at HipType we'd love to help authors and publishers uh, run those experiments so that they can make their books even better. Yeah, that's interesting it's, and it's actually one of the things we wrestle with at O'Reilly because when you buy an ebook directly from us uh, part of that purchase gives you access to lifetime updates of that edition which we can fulfill on O'Reilly.com, but you can't get that same thing through Amazon, let's say, or BNN. So you're absolutely right that the, the retailers, I think, are, are playing catch up here. James Levy, President and CEO of HipType, thanks so much for talking to us today on this TOC podcast. Yeah, it was great to talk to you, Jeff.